A very good evening to all the participants of this webinar from DTRTI Lucknow. I am Arvind Mishra, Deputy Director, welcoming you once again to another DTRTI Lucknow webinar for 2021. And today our topic of discussion is trial balance. In this topic, we'll be discussing what is the technique of taking the balances from the accounts in the ledger in order to prepare the trial balance. And we will also understand what is trial balance and what purposes a trial balance can serve. So trial balance is one of the phases of the accounting process. We begin with making the entry in the journal. And uh, from the journal, the entries go into the ledger. And from the ledger, we prepare the trial balance. The trial balance is a uh, statement where all the ledger accounts are listed. This is a stage before preparing preparing the PNL account and the trading account and the balance sheet. And this is a stage which comes after the general entries. The trial balance is the very basis for preparing final accounts, which is the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. The trial balance reflects all the ledger balances on any particular date. We select a date on that date. We take all the balances. Normally it is the end of the financial year. Because end of the financial year trial balance is very useful to us because it helps us to prepare the final accounts in the form of profit and loss account and balance sheet. Of course, trial balance has a very good uh, use in terms of checking the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts. If we have made any errors, then the trial balance will not uh, tally and therefore it will indicate that there is some arithmetical inaccuracy in the entries which were made. So you'll find that uh, a lot of use is being made when we look at topics like rectification of errors a lot of use is being made of the trial balance over there. <clears throat> so trial balance contains various ledger balances on a particular date. Particular date is important. It could be any date, preferably the end of the financial year because the end of the financial year date helps us to prepare the final account. But of course we can make the trial balance for any date just to check the accuracy of our accounts. So it forms the very basis for preparing the final financial statements called the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. If the trial balance tallies, it means that accounts are arithmetically accurate, though there may be certain errors which are still remaining undetected. So we have to be very careful that uh, if the trial balance is tallying, which means that the, the debit side is equal to the credit side. If the total of the debit side is equal to the total of the debit credit side, that does not mean that there are no errors. Errors may still be there. But by and large, we can say that there is arithmetical. And by and large, we can also say that uh, not many errors would be there. Therefore, it is important that we carefully do the journal entries and we carefully post the journal entries into the ledger. If we are not careful with our journal entries and we are not careful with our posting of the entries in the ledger, then it is possible that even after the trial balance has tallied, there may still be errors in the books of accounts. 
we'll come to that when we discuss the topic of rectification of errors. Now, as we have seen that preparation of trial balance is a phase in the accounting process. We can say that it is the third phase in the accounting process because once we have posted the accounts in the ledger, we prepare the statement to, so, to show the debit balances separately and the credit balances separately. All the debit balances are shown in a separate column and all the credit balances, all the accounts having credit balances on a certain particular date are shown in a separate column. Now, the trial balance is not a balance or it is not an account. It is a statement. We have to be very careful about that. So the trial balance is a statement. And uh, it may be prepared by listing each and every account. You make a list. It is just a list or a statement of every account. And we enter the debit balances and the credit balances of the, in the separate columns. So therefore, we make the list of the accounts and uh, on the right hand side, we place the balance. If it is a credit balance, we place it on the separate column. If it is a debit balance, then we place it in a separate column. Now, whichever way it is prepared, whichever way the trial balance is prepared, the totals of the two columns should agree the debit balance column total and the credit balance column total, they should agree with each other or they should tally with each, with each other. If they are not tallying, it is 100% proof that there is some error, certainly. But even if they are tallying, still there may be some errors which have gone undetected, even at the trial balance stage. So an agreement between the debit total and the credit total indicates that there is a reasonable accuracy in the accounting work that has been done. But of course, if there is, if the two sides do not agree, then there is an arithmetical error. Now, why should these uh, two sides tally? Because uh, in the double entry system, we make equal entries equal double entries whenever we enter a transaction. One entry is debit entry, other is, other is the credit entry. And both are equal in magnitude, so why shouldn't both sides tally? Because after all, every entry has been made by us through a double entry system. One debit and one credit, and both are equal in magnitude. So they are all the time canceling each other. So the amount written on the debit side of the various accounts will always be equal to the total of the amounts entered on the credit side of other accounts and vice versa. Hence, the totals of the debit sides must be equal to the totals of the credit side. Similarly, we can say that all the debit balances will be equal to the total of the credit balances. Once we have tallied the two sides, once this agreement is established, then we have a reasonable confidence that the accounting work is free from clerical errors. It is a reasonable confidence. It doesn't mean that there are no errors at all. The confidence is that there is, uh, there is a reasonable confidence, not a complete 100% confidence. Though it is not proof of 100% accuracy at all, that both sides are tallying because there are some errors of principle and some compensating errors may still be there. Still remain there. Compensating errors, we'll be studying in the rectification of errors chapter, but all we can say is that there are two errors and both one is plus magnitude same, but the one is in uh, one is plus error and other is a minus error and both are similar in magnitude and therefore they are cancelling each other and they are compensating each other. So wherever there are two compensating errors, they are both acting in reverse directions and therefore 
uh, leading to a balancing of the trial balance account or trial balance statement rather. But these compensating errors are two separate errors which are present there in the books. Of course, there can be some errors of principle also, which have gone undetected, and still the trial balance is tallying. So generally, when we have to check the arithmetical accuracy of the accounts, we prepare a trial balance. And um, mostly it is prepared on a monthly interval so that we can check on a monthly basis whether the arithmetical accuracy of accounts is maintained or not. Now, in computerized accounts, any time you can make a trial balance. But because double entry system is followed, one can prepare a trial balance at any time. It is not necessarily every month or every week, but at any instant also trial balance can be made. Though trial balance can be prepared any time, but it is preferable to prepare it at the end of the accounting year just to ensure that the arithmetical accuracy of all the accounts before the preparation of the financial statements. We would like to ensure that when we are going about preparing the financial statement, uh, there are no arithmetical inaccuracies in our accounts, in the books of accounts. So we would like to ensure that the trial balance is agreeing as far as the debit totals and the credit totals are concerned before we prepare the financial statements. Now in computerized ac accounts, of course, it will give you an error as soon as you make an error in making any journal entry. Because instantaneously it will say the trial balance is not agreeing. That is, of course, that is of course the beauty and power of computation. Now, what are the objectives of preparing the trial balance? Why do we prepare the trial balance? What is our objective? Trial balance ko tayar kar denge piche. So the objectives are number one. The trial balance enables one to establish whether the posting and other accounting processes have been carried out without committing arithmetical errors. So we want to know if we have made any arithmetical errors or not. So trial balance helps us to establish the arithmetical accuracy of the books. This is one objective. Another objective is that uh, financial statements are prepared once the trial balance is agreed or the debit side totals are equal to the credit side totals. Because if the trial balance is not agreeing, then preparing the financial statements work may become very burdensome or very cumbersome. Preparation of financial statements is the second objective behind preparation of trial balance. Now, the third objective is the trial balance serves as a summary of whatever is in the ledger. So it is it can also be called a ledger summary or the ledger balances summary. And uh, when we are seeing the summaries, we need not see the ledger unless we need to see the details which are required to be seen in respect of any account. So trial balance also serves the purpose when we just want to know the ledger balances. In that case, we need not open the ledger at all. So trial balance is a summary of the ledger. Now, what is the form of the trial balance? So trial balance is uh, written like this, that uh, trial balance as at, as at means the, the, here we write the date, or you could even, if it pleases you, you can write the time also in computational technology. That is also possible. And then, of course, there are these columns over there. So first column is a serial number. The second column is the name of the ledger account. The, the third column is that uh, what is the folio number or the page number of the ledger where that account is mentioned, from where it is being brought into the trial balance statement. And then, of course, if uh, there is a debit balance in that account, then we write it in the next column. And if there is a credit balance, then we write it in the 
for the next call. Now we, we can note the undimensioned points that a trial balance is prepared on a particular date or a particular time. And this date or time should be mentioned at the top here. And here in the second column, the name of the account will be mentioned. Then in the fourth column, the total of the debit side of the account concerned all the debit balance of that account. If that account is holding a debit balance, then that is entered here in the next column, the credit balance. If, if the account is having a net credit balance, then that credit balance is written here. And finally, this debit side column and the credit column, these two columns are totaled at the end. A total is taken. And of course, the first column and the third column is very easy to understand. The third column in particular ledger folio is the page number of that account in the ledger. Now we have to see what are the limitations of a trial balance, what the trial balance cannot achieve for us. We should note that the agreement of the trial balance, if the trial balance is agreeing, that means if the debit side total is equal to the credit side, it is not a conclusive proof of its accuracy. In other words, even if the trial balance is agreeing, some errors may remain. And uh, what could be these errors? Even if the trial balance is agreeing. One error could be that the transaction has not been entered at all in the journal. If the transaction has not been entered, so that means the debit side is also not entered and credit side is also not entered at all. So obviously the trial balance will agree. Second reason could be a wrong amount has been written in both the columns of the journal. That means there is a wrong amount in the debit side as well as the wrong amount in the credit side. For example, if the amount that was there was 250 rupees on the credit side and 250 rupees on the debit side, instead of 250, we write 275. The trial balance is still agreeing because the debit side total is the same as the credit side. Then the third situation could be the wrong, uh, a wrong account has been mentioned in the journal. So this is, a, it can also be called an error of principle that we wanted to write a purchase account, but we have written a sales account. So even if we write a wrong account, Still, the trial balance may agree. May agree, you can say. Sometimes by writing a wrong account, it may not agree. But at times, if we write a wrong account in the journal, still the trial balance may agree. Now, another situation could be an entry has not at all been posted in the ledger. Entry has been made in the journal, but not posted into the ledger at all. So that means if a journal entry is not posted into ledger, neither the debit is posted nor the credit is posted. The entire entry is missing from the ledger. Or it could be that an entry is posted twice in the ledger or two times in the, in the ledger. Now, in spite of all these errors, the trial balance may still be agreeing, which means that the debit side total may still be equal to the credit side total. So these are the limitations of a trial balance that even in spite of the fact that we have prepared a trial balance and in spite of the fact that it is agreeing also, still errors may be there which are undetected. And therefore, uh, we cannot just rely upon trial balance 100%. It's not a 100% reliable proof that if trial balance is agreeing, then uh, there is no error. At the most, we can say substantial arithmetical errors are not there. Still, it is not to say that trial balance is not useful. Trial balance is very useful because without the trial balance, preparation of 
financial statement will become a very, very tough job, will be difficult. Now, how do we prepare the trial balance? Now, to prepare the trial balance, one method that we are going to study is the total method of preparing the trial balance. Now, under the total method, every ledger account is uh, totaled, and the total amount of the debit side and the credit side, that means that uh, total of every side without taking the balance is transferred straight to the trial balance. Total method means that we take we take an account, we take the total of the debit side, we take the total of the credit side, and, and both the totals we enter straight into the trial balance. So we are not reducing the credit balance from uh, credit total from the debit total and finding the credit balance at all here. We are simply taking the total of the debit side and we are simply taking the total of the credit side of any account and entering that total in the relevant column, the debit column or debit balance column or the credit column. In this method, the trial balance can be prepared as soon as our ledger account is totaled. We need not subtract the credit total from the debit total or the debit total from the credit total. So whatever time was taken for balancing the ledger account, that time is saved under this total method because ultimately balance would be found in the trial balance itself. The difference of the totals of each ledger account is the balance of that particular account in the final trial balance. So this method is not commonly used as it cannot help in the preparing the financial statements. Because if you, if you need a method which will help in preparing the financial statements, you need the balances of every account. Until unless you do that, you can't prepare the, the preparing financial statements will be a very, very difficult job. Now let us take an example. A ledger extract or something which is taken from a ledger is given here relating to the business of X and company as on March 31, 2016. So we are seeing here a cash account, a cash account or rather we can say what we are seeing here is a ledger extract. In the ledger extract, a cash account is mentioned here, a furniture account is there, a salary account is there, Shams account is there, purchases account is there, and the purchase return account is there, and Rams account is also there, and of course the sales account, sales return account, and the capital account. We are having all these accounts here. So we have taken an extract from the ledger relating to business of X and company. And this extract is as on the date March 31, 2016. On the basis of this extract, it is required to prepare the trial balance by the total method. So total method means we total the debit side and total the credit side. For example, here you are having the cash account. Of course, you have, you have, we, have, we have taken a balance here. But let us say if we were to go by the total method, then we would be totaling all the entries on the debit side, which is coming to 35,500. And we'll be totaling all the entries on the credit side. So that would be 35,500 minus 7,500. So that would be 27,500. Or rather 27,000. Or rather, I should say 28,000. So, similarly, we just take the totals of all the accounts which are mentioned here 
and we list them over here. As you can see, the total under the total method, we first take the cash account, and in the cash account, the total of the debit items was thirty-five thousand five hundred. Total of the credit items was twenty-eight thousand. In the furniture account, total of the debit side is three thousand, and total of the credit side is zero. You can see the furniture account here. You can see here in the furniture account, the debit side total is three thousand. And the credit side total is zero because there is no entry there. We have just carried down the balance of three thousand. So therefore, then we move on to salary. And in salary account, the total of the debit items is two thousand five hundred, and credit item total is zero. Similarly, we are writing all the other accounts which are taken in the extract, and uh, finally. We are total, totaling all the debit side, and we find the total coming to one lakh one nineteen thousand hundred, and we finding we are finding the total of the credit side also equal to one lakh nineteen thousand one hundred. So we can say that uh, this trial balance is finally agreeing. So this uh, this question we have done, this illustration we have done by the total methods. Obviously, the second method is the balance method, which means that we are taking the balance of every account and finally listing it. If we have to follow the illustration too, we just find the balances which are already mentioned there, and we take the total of the balances and uh, we mention them in the trial balance. And here you can see only the balances are being mentioned and not the totals of. Both the debit and the credit side, and here we are finding the total of the debit balance coming to forty-four thousand, and the total of the credit balance coming to forty-four thousand, which is also the same amount. It means that this trial balance total is agreeing on the debit and the credit side, which should be the case normally. Now the third method. Contains both the methods combined together, which is the total method and the balance method. So as you can see, under this method, you are writing the debit side totals also, the credit side total also, and you are writing the debit balances, the debit credit balances also. So this is a combination of the total method and the balance method. As you can see, we have combined the above two illustrations into this one. So these are the three methods by which we prepare a trial balance statement. If the trial balance does not agree after transferring the balance of all the ledger accounts, including cash and bank balance, we are finding the trial balance is not agreeing, and also errors are not located timely, and we are not able to locate the errors in a timely fashion. Then the trial balance is, if we are not able to find the errors, what do we do? We have to make the trial balance agree, and therefore, the trial balance or the balance in the trial balance statement is tallied by transferring the difference of the debit and credit side of the trial balance to an account which is known as suspense account. So we bring into the picture uh, an account called the suspense account, and uh, which is a temporary account. Open to proceed further to in order to make the trial balance agree, so that uh, we are not able to, um, so that we can proceed further to prepare the financial statements in a timely manner. Now, what are the rules for preparing the trial balance? While preparing the trial balance from the given list of the ledger balances, the rules. Which should be taken care of. Uh, number one, the balance of all the asset accounts or the expenses accounts or the losses or the joint account, cash and bank balances are placed in the debit column of the trial balance. So the balances of all these accounts, which have a normal debit balance, are mentioned on the debit column of the trial balance, and the balance of all the 
liabilities account, the income account, profits account, and capital account are placed in the credit column of the trial balance. So the above accounts balances are placed on the debit column, which is debit balance, and these accounts are having credit balance. Now we go to the, another illustration. From the ledger balances which are given here, we have to prepare a trial balance of another traders. So we prepare the trial balance, we'll split these amounts into debit and credit balances. So we are separately writing the debit balances and separately, separately writing the credit balances. And we are finding that uh, all the debit balance totals are equal to the credit balance totals. And therefore our trial balance is agreeing over here. Now, in order to make the trial balance here, what we have done is we have separated the balances. So, sometimes we are not shown whether there is a debit or a credit balance. So, we must know from our knowledge of accounting whether there is a debit balance in that account or normally is there is a credit balance in that account. And if we know that, then we can list them in form of a trial balance. And if it agrees, we can say this trial balance is agreeing. Now let us, broadly speaking, we are aware that uh, from the balance sheet, we know that all the assets have got debit balances and all the expenses have got the debit balances. And all the liabilities and the incomes have got the credit balances. Now, when we go to the illustration four, Mr. Singhania has asked us to finalize his account for the year 31st March 2016. Till date, he himself has recorded the transaction. So maybe he has made mistakes there. So as the basis for audit, Mr. Singhania has furnished with us with a statement that these are having, that he's having in various accounts, these debit balances and credit balances. So when they are totaling, we are seeing that they are balancing or they are agreeing with each other. Now it has been provided that the closing inventory on 31st March 2016, the closing inventory was valued at 574. Now Mr. Singhania claims that he has recorded every transaction correctly as the trial balance is telling completely. But we have to check the accuracy of the above trial balance, whether the trial balance is correct or not. Which means that uh, if certain accounts are having credit balance, are they shown on the correct side or there is a compensating error? So when we look at this uh, account very clearly, we try to correct all the entries. And when we try to correct all the entries, we are making certain changes, still the, still the total is the same. The total is remaining the same, but there are some errors which have gone undetected. For example, something which is due from customers is an asset, so its balance will be, balance will be a debit balance. So due from customers has to be written on the debit side. Although here, due from customers is written on the credit side, which is a mistake. Now, purchase return account always shows a credit balance. We must know that because purchases always show, show a debit balances. So purchase return account will always show a credit balance. Now, Whatever balance is, whatever balance is there in creditor's account, that is a liability. So the balance of the creditor account should be a credit balance. And uh, though in the question, it is given as a debit balance. So that correction has to be made. 
Then bills payable is a liability, so its balance should be a credit balance and not a debit balance. You can uh, see these things here. Balance in the creditor's account. So can we see any creditor here? All the balances in the creditor account. You can see here trade payables. These are the creditors. They are shown as debit balances, whereas they should be these should be credit balances. Also, we are seeing here the inventory, which is opening inventory represents the asset, so it will have a debit balance. So opening inventory is an asset. We can see opening entry inventory has been written as a debit balance here, but of course here it was wrongly written on the credit side. The beauty is that in spite of so many wrong entries, the totals are the same. So in spite of the totals being the same, there still could be errors while writing the accounts. As a summary, we can say that trial balance contains all the ledger balances on a particular date. It is also the basis for preparing the final profit and loss account and balance sheet. If it tallies, I mean, the, if the trial balance tallies, it means the accounts are arithmetically accurate, but still there could be certain errors which may remain undetected. It is very important to carefully generalize and post the entries so that our ledger is correct and therefore our trial balance is also correct. So we need to be very careful while generalizing and posting the entries in the ledger because the trial balance is not a, an ultimate guarantee of of the errors or the absence thereof now in order to test the knowledge you can do a few questions a trial balance will not balance in what situation now if the current general entry is posted twice then, of course, if a correct journal entry is posted twice, it will tally. It will balance. The purchase of the credit basis is debited to purchases. If there are, if there is some purchase being made on credit basis, it is debited to purchases and credited to cash. Actually, the credit should made should be made to the customer. But the credit is being made to cash. So in this case, obviously, the purchase is being made, uh, the purchase entry is being made correctly, but, or the debit entry is being made correctly, but the credit entry is not going to the correct site. because it is not going to the correct account because it was a credit purchase. It should have been credited to, to the customer account, which means that uh, the made, purchase is made from the customer and there is a payable created there. Instead of crediting the customer, we are crediting the cash here. So cash is on the other side of the balance sheet. Customer is on the other side of the balance sheet. It will lead to a imbalance in the trial balance. Now 500 cash payment to creditor is debited to trade payable for 50 and credited to cash as 500. We are making a cash payment to a creditor. Obviously in this case, the trade payable should be debited 
the payment is made to creditor, but the debit entry, which was supposed to be 500 rupees, is now 50 rupees, and the credit entry is being made to cash. Because we made a cash payment, so the credit entry in cash account is correct to the extent of 500. But the debit entry which is made to the trade payable is for only 50 rupees. So there are two transactions coming here. One is a debit and other is a credit. Both transactions are not equally entered there because in one case 50 rupees is entered and in another case 500 rupees is entered. So obviously it will create a imbalance. So here is creating an imbalance because 500 cash payment is written as 50 by debiting to trade payables for 50 instead of 500. So as, as we see here, when we make a purchase on credit basis, we have to debit purchases and we have to credit the customer. When we credit the customer, what we are doing is that uh, instead of ca crediting cash, we are crediting the customer. When a purchase is debited, we can say that it is an expense. And therefore, we are entering something into the capital account as an expenditure or a, as a loss also you can say and therefore you are reducing something from the left side of the balance sheet and at the same time we can add something to the left side by creating the customer. On the other hand, we have reduced something from the debit side, so we can reduce something from the cash other side also. So B will not create any imbalance because we had reduced something from the left side of the balance sheet and we were supposed to add something in form of trade payable or in form of the customer payable on the same side. But instead of adding something on the same side, we can reduce something from the other side also. So B will not create any imbalance. A will not create any imbalance. C will definitely create an imbalance in the trial balance. Now second is 1,500 rupees which are received from the subtenant for rent. And it was entered correctly in the cash book because 1,500 rupees is received in cash it was correctly written in the cash book because the amount is received in cash. But instead of posting, it was posted to the debit of the rent account. So in the trial balance, what will happen? It is received from the subtenant. So, for rent. And so, basically, what could have been done here is that uh, we are receiving the money into the cash account. And so, if we look at the balance sheet, something is being added uh, in form of 1500 rupees on the right hand side of the balance sheet. And then we are adding something, or we, are, we are reducing something from the capital account. Actually, the entry should have been made to the credit side of the rent account, but by mistake, the entry is, made, is being made 
to the debit side of the rent account. So we are, what we are doing is that we are increasing 1,500 rupees on the right hand side of the balance sheet. On the other hand, we were supposed to increase something on the left side of the balance sheet by 1,500. But what we are doing is that we are minusing 1,500. So we are creating a difference of uh, 3,000 from the actual that should have been there on the left side. So we can say that the debit side total now the debit side total the debit total will be greater by 1500 than the credit total not by 3000 because we have already added something uh, equal to 1500 to the debit side of the balance sheet or we can say to the right side of the balance sheet the right side totals are the debit totals on the, the balance sheet. So we have added something about 1,500 rupees as cash received on the right side. On the other hand, we have done a minus 3,000 on the left side. So therefore, our left, our right side will be more by 1,500. Because uh, uh, on the other hand, we can say the right side we are we had increased by 1,500. On the left side, what we have done is we have reduced by 1,500. Actually, we should have increased that side by 1,500, but we have reduced left side by 1,500, but we have increased the right side by 1500. So we have created a difference between the right side and the left side of 3000 rupees. So the correct answer in this case will be the debit total will be greater by 3000 rupees than the credit total. So A will be the right answer in this case. If I were to repeat it for you, what we are doing over here is that uh, the debit side of the balance sheet if i were to call it because the right side contains the cash entry where the debit balances will appear of the cash so when some money is going into the cash account we are debiting it so as money is received as rent in cash we are increasing 1500 rupees in the cash account by debiting that account, by debiting, by increasing the debit balance. So the right side is going up by 1,500 rupees. On the left hand side, we have debited the rent account instead of crediting it. So we have left side, we have reduced by 1,500 rupees. Right side, we have increased by 1,500 rupees. So total difference between the right side and the left side is now 3,000 rupees. So A is the right answer in this case, that the debit total will be greater by 3000 rupees than the credit total. Now, the third question says that after preparation of ledgers, or after preparing the ledgers, what is the next step in the, pre is, uh, in the preparations? So after preparing ledgers, the next step is the preparation of the trial balance. That is the right answer as we have studied earlier also. Now after prepare, question number four says that after preparing the trial balance, the accountant finds that the total of the debit side is short by 1,500. Now he sees that uh, total of the debit side is less by 1,500 as compared to the total of the credit side. So he's finding a difference of 1,500. Now what, what is he supposed to do with this difference? The difference he will, either he will credit to the suspense account or he will, he will debit to the suspense account. 
you know, debit side is short, credit side is more. So there is a, you can say there is a credit balance in the trial balance. And to make it equal, therefore, he has to put a debit entry into the trial balance in the name of the suspense account. The debit side is shorter. So therefore, debit side has to be made. The an entry is to be made in debit side. So an entry, if it is made on the debit side as a debit balance, then that entry is being made in the name of the suspense account. And therefore, we can say that that entry will be a debit entry in the suspense account. So 1,500 rupees will be debited to suspense account in this case. Now, in case of question number five, we are seeing that under various account that there are certain debit and credit entries. And we are also seeing that there is a difference on of the left side and the credits on the right side also. The credit side, if, uh, the credit, credit side total is 17,500. And if we closely observe this, sales is shown as a credit balance. Purchase is shown as a debit balance. Miscellaneous expenses are shown as a debit balance, but salary is wrongly shown as a credit balance, whereas salary which we are paying should be shown on the debit side. Supposing the salary was shown on the debit side, then the debit side total would have been 15,000 and the credit side total would also have been 15,000. So the total would have tallied. So what is the wrong entry here? The salary entry is wrong. So the difference is trial in this trial balance is due to the wrong placing of the salaries account, which is B, and that is the right answer in this case. So with that, what we can do, what we can say is that we have studied the trial, the topic trial balance, and we have come to the completion of this topic. And therefore, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we'll be starting a fresh topic. And we'll be requesting all the participants to join us for another fresh topic in bookkeeping and accountancy. Don't forget to join us and please forgive us for uh, little delays. Of course, I would not like to call them little delays, too much of delay. But please bear with us because we have been trying to do everything uh, to ensure that delays are not there. And if delays are happening, it is in spite of our all efforts that we are putting in. And therefore, please give us a chance to improve ourselves and please be connected with us so that as we are moving into more and more difficult topics in bookkeeping and accountancy, uh, we are able to make the, the tough things look simple to you. So thank you very much for having joined us for this session. Please join us at 7.45 a.m. in the morning. I am Arvind Mishra signing off, Deputy Director from the DTRTA Lucknow, from the DTRTA Lucknow webinars this evening, wishing you once again a very good night and uh, have a good day tomorrow. Please be with us at 7.45 a.m. Thank you so much.